congestion with Vicks Sinex Saline Nasal Mist. <laughs> For drug-free relief that works fast. Happening now. Some seniors are having a hard time signing up for vaccinations, but others are having an even more difficult time. The added hurdles that Spanish speakers are having signing up for vaccines and what's being done to help them. One year ago this week, San Antonio school children left for spring break, but they didn't come back. What we've learned since the COVID-19 pandemic shut down schools. They're a commuter's friend, the insulated travel mug. You want to keep your coffee hot and your iced tea cold. Coming up, which ones work the best? And as we finish up the work week tomorrow, get ready for another pretty cloudy, warm and muggy day. It's not until the weekend that we'll see a better chance of showers and even a few thunderstorms. We'll talk about that coming up in the full forecast. The News at 5 starts right now. Now that more COVID-19 vaccines are headed here and those over the age of 50 are now eligible to get them, there are some efforts to reinforce online access for Spanish speakers to get their appointments. Jesse Degollado says a San Antonio City Council member wants to see a more uniform way to reach the Spanish language community, many of them seniors. At 81, Angel Fuentes is still able to water his yard, but he couldn't schedule an appointment to get his COVID-19 vaccine with no internet, a cell phone he's unfamiliar with, and phone lines that were jammed. And so he says for him it was a big problem until a friend set up his appointment for his first vaccine shot. Like him, other seniors, including many of Adriana Rocha Garcia's constituents, are still having a hard time. I think everybody needs to do better. I think that the, the, the problem is that uh, everybody's doing their own thing. She says take Central Med, for example. Hablamos Español is at the top of its website with a phone number with bilingual operators like WellMed and 311. To register, the city's website has a Spanish language option, and so does the one for University Health. Still, Rocha Garcia says it may be harder for some to find what they need. And although we found University Health's Spanish language website, Rocha Garcia couldn't find the translation on her iPhone. Also, she says instead of haga una cita, make an appointment, Google Translate uses words not typically used in South Texas like agendar or programación. I think that we really need to get together ASAP and figure out what that solution is for our Spanish speaking audiences. Regardless, Angel Fuentes urges others to keep looking. Se sientan, yo creo, y esperan un milagro instead of sitting around waiting for a miracle. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Councilwoman Rocha Garcia says she'll bring it up at next week's uh, city, uh, next week when the city's Community Health and Equity Committee meets with vaccine providers, both University Health and Metro Health, tell us that they now have improvements to their Spanish language websites now in the works. CVS announcing that they will be opening more vaccination sites in Texas, 74 new sites to be specific. Stores are going to be getting doses starting on Saturday, and they're going to be making appointments available when they get them. However, CVS has not announced which of the locations will be getting the vaccine. The vaccines will be available to all those eligible residents in phases 1A and 1B, those age 65 or older, those 16 and older with chronic medical condition and also teachers and child care providers. But then starting on Monday, the vaccine will also be available to those in phase 1C. That's anyone over the age of 50 or 50 and older. If you want to make an appointment, you can sign up on the CVS app or the website CVS.com or you can call 1-800 746-7287. You need to make an appointment to get your shot there. They will not be accepting any walk-ins and their website is available in Spanish. Meanwhile, four former first couples are teaming up to urge Americans to get the coronavirus vaccine. Two new ads are out featuring Presidents Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush and Barack Obama along with their wives. They are part of a newly released ad campaign to tackle vaccine skepticism. One of the ads shows the former presidents and first ladies receiving their vaccines. The other features Clinton, Bush and Obama together, encouraging Americans to get vaccinated. A man training to be a local police officer arrested on child pornography charges, Armando Vidales Jr., age 23, 
facing two counts of possession with the intent to promote child pornography. Both of those charges are second degree felonies. Atascosa County Sheriff David Soward uh, confirming that Vidalis was training at the time to be a police officer at the San Antonio Law Enforcement Academy. Vidalis was released on a $160,000 bond yesterday. The spokesperson from the Texas Attorney General's office did not respond to a request to get comment about the case. We have now learned the name of a second man killed in a crash on the northwest side. Today, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified the man as 25-year-old Khalid Valencia. 24-year-old Jovan Cruz was also killed in the crash. Police say Valencia and Cruz were speeding on Hausman Road around 2 o'clock yesterday morning. Investigators tell us their car hit a barrier, lifted off the ground, and hit a median on the main lanes of I-10, killing them both. No other vehicles were involved in that crash. It has been exactly one year now since COVID-19 was declared a pandemic disrupting all of our lives. Work, school, and just about every other aspect of our lives began to happen at home. All major events canceled. The U.S. economy came to a screeching halt as unemployment rates hit an all-time high with millions of Americans losing their jobs due to statewide lockdowns. In the last year, there have now been 29.3 million cases of COVID-19 here in the United States with uh, millions of them here in Texas, and 530,000 Americans have now died. With vaccine distribution underway, many people and businesses continuing to recover from the lasting impacts of the coronavirus, we asked some residents today how they're feeling on this grim anniversary. Well, it's certainly a sad anniversary to say the least. And it's amazing how much, how quickly the time has gone though, despite the, the pain and agony that so many people have experienced in this past year. It we have seen cases get lower here in Bear County, and with more people getting vaccinated throughout the state and across the country, we can finally see a light at the end of the tunnel after this very long year. Yes, it has been a long year. One year ago this week, San Antonio school children began their 2020 spring break vacation, only to learn it wouldn't end as planned. COVID-19's pandemic worries had reached a tipping point and schools shut down all across the nation. Nothing has been the same ever since. One year later, superintendents are warning not to expect schools to ever return to exactly what they were. The world of learning forever changed. The 2020 school yearbook might look on the cover like any other, but turn the page and you'll find it filled with years worth of childhood angst and widespread anxiety. Did I know it was going to impact our schools? Absolutely. Um, did I know it was going to shut schools uh, in the way that it did? Absolutely not. I don't think anybody could predict that. The kids who initially cheered that school was interrupted soon learned virtual classrooms are not for everyone. But I just look at the incredible learning loss that we saw in March, April and May last year uh, and think about how long it's going to take us and the amount of resources it's going to take us to ameliorate that, to fix that. Um, and it, it's it's. My, in my mind, something I wish we had not done. Superintendents in San Antonio voiced similar sentiments. If they knew then what they know now, 2020's classrooms would not have shut down. Parents were left at home watching grades go down and depression go sky high. We have advisory groups made up of parents and they share with us how their children are depressed. They're feeling isolated. Going forward, there are issues that are still not resolved. Six billion dollars of special COVID relief funding has not been dispersed by the state to the schools. And there's widespread star test confusion with different rules and accountability for grades three through eight, virtual students and class taught kids. The good news is that school testing and vaccinations are rising daily as community COVID cases decline. The superintendents want the kids back in class. It's just ironic that people are willing to open up restaurants and bars and other, other businesses, which are very important in our community. Nobody wants them open than I do, but yet there's still this hesitation about having schools open. One of the biggest challenges we've had is convincing uh, families that uh, that the building is the best place for them to be, frankly, that, that they really need to be in, the, in most cases uh, in the building. And that's a struggle that goes on to this day. The superintendents are in agreement that virtual learning, it's here to stay, but what exactly that's going to look like remains unclear. This fall's school schedule is also going to be different. They say, look for news on that before the end of this semester. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News.
Texas coronavirus restrictions are officially over, but one local senior living facility is keeping all of their COVID-19 safety measures in place. At Morningside Ministries, a senior living community, staff and residents must still wear a mask. Essential caregivers are the only ones who can visit their loved ones inside the facility. Everyone else can schedule a masked visit outside or through a window. It's very important for our residents to still make connections with their loved ones, but we do have to be responsible in how we make those connections. Um, our, our families have to make appointments. They have to get COVID tested. They have to make sure they're wearing a mask. Munoz says they will continue with following guidelines from the Texas Health and Human Services Commission and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Coming up tonight at 6, hear from a San Antonio woman whose father stays at the facility and hear her experience visiting, visiting him throughout the pandemic. President Joe Biden signing the COVID-19 relief bill into law today, a day earlier than anticipated, saying, quote, this is historic legislation about rebuilding the backbone of this country. Congress passed the $1.9 trillion economic relief package yesterday. The relief bill has been Biden's first and most pressing legislative priority since taking office back in January. ABC's Mary Alice Parks has more. President Biden making it official, signing his $1.9 trillion COVID relief package into law one day earlier than originally planned. This historic legislation is about rebuilding the backbone of this country and giving people in this nation, working people, middle class folks, uh, people who built the country a fighting chance. The law calls for billions of dollars in government funding for small businesses, vaccine rollouts and schools, as well as direct payments to most Americans. The White House says those should go out this month. Businesses already reacting. United and American Airlines canceling plans to furlough tens of thousands of employees. If you have one of those Warren Act notices we sent out in February, tear it up. There aren't gonna be any furloughs at American Airlines in April. Thursday evening, President Biden will deliver a primetime address to mark the one year anniversary of when the nation shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Next week, Biden, the First Lady and Vice President Harris all planning to hit the road. The White House says they want to make sure Americans across the country know what's in the law and which benefits might be available to them. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who voted against President Biden's COVID relief package, said the economy was already improving when Biden took office and that his Republican colleagues deserve credit for that because of stimulus packages they passed last year. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. Taking a look outside the live cam on this Thursday, you could say we're kind of stuck in a rut here. We've fallen into this pattern of mostly cloudy skies, very warm muggy conditions, but also windy conditions as well. That wind is stubborn. It's sticking around and you're going to notice it until we get to Saturday. A look at our weather watcher temperatures. Very warm, especially off to the west of 35, 83 in Del Rio and in Eagle Pass and in around Bear County. Generally, we've got temperatures in the mid to upper 70, 79 in Windcrest, uh, 77 up in Kendall County and Bernie this afternoon. Temperatures this evening slowly falling into the low to mid 70s. It'll be staying on the warm side, mostly cloudy for a lot of us eventually becoming overcast as we get closer to midnight and you guessed it staying breezy this evening evening as well. Cold front still on track for Saturday night. That'll bring us a chance of showers and storms. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. Ursula. Thank you, Katie. Still ahead. Uh, are you trying to find that perfect travel mug? Well, there might be an exact science to see which one's best for your morning coffee. 12 on your side coming up next. Whether you love camping or you just like to sip on your favorite drink during your daily commute, they come in handy. We're talking about insulated travel mugs. You might have already found the perfect cup for you, or maybe you have a cupboard full of rejects like me. Consumer Reports found there is a science to knowing which travel mug is best. 12 Inch Size Marilyn Moore shows us which ones will keep your coffee hot the longest. The perfect travel mug. It's the commuter's quest. You want it to keep your hots hot, your colds cold, and be dribble proof. A travel mug seems like it would be a really simple thing, but a lot of people have a surprisingly tough time finding one that's perfect. 
So Consumer Reports tested insulated mugs from several brands, including Yeti, Thermos, Contigo, and Starbucks. First, they checked temperature retention, filling each with boiling water and opening them at intervals to take the temperature until it reached 140 degrees. They did the same for cold beverages, too. They also checked to see how easy they are to clean, whether you can open with one hand while driving, and whether they fit in a variety of cup holders. Best of the test, this 16-ounce Zoji Rushi. It kept liquid hot for more than 13 hours. It's easy to open, leak-proof, fits most cup holders, and its lid comes apart so it's easier to clean. It's $28. For a little less money, this Thermos Stainless King keeps coffee hot for about seven hours, and it has a handy tea bag hook. If cleanup is key, testers found this 16-ounce Elo Campy for $18 is your best bet. Plus, it's leak proof. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So many of those at our house. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. But now we know which one we got to go out. And okay, so do we rest. need something to keep our coffee warm in the morning or do we need something cool to drink in the morning? Cool, definitely. I mean, these past couple of mornings, our temperatures have been well above average for this time of year feeling very spring like right uh, well, we'll we are still nine days away from the official start of the spring season that is going to be Saturday March 20th so still nine days to go but so far this week has felt very spring like warm and certainly on the humid side and that'll be the case for the next couple of days as well you'll see our morning temperatures Friday Saturday close to 70 degrees it's not until Sunday morning Monday morning that we'll get those temperatures back down closer to average for this time of year and It'll be a little on the cool side Sunday morning 53 and then even a touch chilly on Monday morning 47 and that's because we've got a front coming through Saturday night that's going to kind of split our weekend in two. I think your better day, especially if you want to spend time outdoors this weekend is going to be Sunday. We'll talk about why still a decent amount of cloud cover out there with the exception of some of our southwestern most communities and that's where temperatures have been allowed again this afternoon to jump into the low 90s upper 80s. It's 89 in Catula 88 in Carrizo Springs. Meanwhile, far Farther off to the north, a touch cooler, 77 in San Antonio, uh, 76 in Kerrville with some additional clouds. That wind is still breezy today off the Gulf of Mexico at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. And once again today, we've seen some gusty winds in places. They're starting to relax just a bit, but earlier this afternoon, we did have some gusts up closer to 25, 30 miles per hour, even couple notches above 30 miles per hour at times. So wind gusts the next couple of days will continue to be elevated, not all day long, but especially late morning into early afternoon. We could see some wind gusts up near 30, 35 miles per hour, both Friday and then into Saturday. It will still be a touch breezy on Sunday, but not nearly as gusty and overall winds will start to relax once we get into the second half of the weekend and then early next week. So I know that wind has kind of been a little bit of a nuisance for you, whether you're hair stuff or trying to do yard work. It has been a little bit of a nuisance. Really what we're waiting on here is a storm system that's still off closer to the West Coast. This is really taking its time uh, moving in from the West Coast and moving off to the east. Um, and that was actually a really cool water vapor picture here. You can see it swirling uh, counterclockwise and this is going to make some eastward progress over the next couple of days. Essentially, our weather is going to stay fairly stagnant Friday into most of Saturday. It is Saturday, late Saturday evening, really Saturday night that that storm system will drag a front across Texas. This will result in some scattered showers and thunderstorms, primarily for San Antonio after midnight into the early morning hours of Sunday morning. But look by 10 a.m. This is off to the east and we'll get a good amount of sunshine going by Sunday afternoon. So. This will be an overnight chance of some showers and storms for us on Saturday. We're not overly concerned about any severe weather. There certainly could be some rumbles of thunder. And I think the most annoying thing about this whole situation, which we do need the rain, don't get me wrong, is that thunderstorms maybe could wake you up. And this is also when we lose an hour of sleep because we spring forward. So don't love that combination because you may get woken up a little bit earlier than you want to Saturday night. But hopefully we'll get a good quick hitting dash of some rain and then clear out beautifully by Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon really, really looks very nice. So until we get there, staying humid again tomorrow morning, we'll start off near 70 degrees, breezy south southeast winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Another gusty day at times tomorrow, warm as well with highs back in the low 80s for a lot of us. That front sweeps through Saturday nights. By Sunday afternoon, we are sitting pretty lower humidity and 75 degrees, Ooh, guys. There you go. Yep. That's going to be pretty. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm.
After an extended break, Rudy Gay returned to play. Yeah, and some of his teammates as well, like Derek White. What was it like for him to go through the COVID-19 health and safety protocols within the NBA? When we come back, he will tell us following the Spurs' loss last night to the Mavericks in Dallas. And life begins after LaMarcus. What do the players think about that? Coming up. San Antonio Spurs did not start out the second half of their season the way they wanted to by losing to the Mavs in Dallas last night, despite the fact that they got off to a great start. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, hit back-to-back -back threes to put the Spurs up 21-18. Then Rudy Gay, playing in his first game in almost three weeks after testing positive for the coronavirus, back on Valentine's Day, hits a three of his own, and the Spurs are out 32-27 after one. DeMar DeRozan is able to spin and hit the baseline jumper, and the Spurs are out in front just like that at the half, 59-52. Now let's take it to the third quarter. Check out this move by Lonnie Walker IV. Euro stepping through two defenders, gets it to fall, plus the foul. Spurs lead 84-83. That's when the tag team of Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis respond. Doncic with the dunk. The Mavs are up 87-86 going into the fourth quarter. Then Luka, magic continues. He finds Kristaps Porzingis for the alley-oop slam. The pair combined for 50 points. Doncic with a triple-double, 22 points, 12 assists and 12 rebounds. The Spurs keep looking for an answer, but they miss 10 straight shots over a five-minute span and fall 115-104. For Rudy Gay, he was just happy to be playing basketball again after going through COVID-19. You know, you can say what you want about it until you actually get it. And, um, you know, obviously myself being, a, you know, an in-shape individual and being able to, you know, work out and do things, you know, easily, um, it was hard for me. It was tough. It wasn't easy. I had more respect for it. And um, I think everybody in the world should. I know a lot of people just, you know, think that it can't happen to them or have had it or, or and think it's over. It's never, and you know, it's not over. You gotta, you gotta respect it. But, you know, it's been tough. There's been times when it's tough and times when, uh, you know, when you had to get yourself back in shape and that's really tough. Obviously going through it is, is, is tough also. So, you know, it's been a process. All right, before tip off of last night's first game back from the All-Star break and first game of the second season, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich dropped the bombshell that the Spurs and LaMarcus Aldridge have decided to part ways, thus ending a six-year run for the seven-time All-Star. He'd been relegated to the bench to returning from a sore right hip. After the game, we got a chance to get reaction from his teammates who began life without LaMarcus. I think he might be the longest uh, teammate that, that I've had um, in, in my career throughout the NBA in Portland and, and in San Antonio. So... Um, you know, he, he's obviously well respected um, with this group in particular um, and, and every team that he, he's played for. So, you know, you, you, as a teammate, you just wish um, the, the best for him and hope that the next um, chapter of his journey, you know, works out for, for him. All right, next up, Orlando with fans. We wait to see whether they buy out LaMarcus's contract or they find somebody who will trade for him. It'll be fun to see fans in the stands. It will be. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Before we go, we have a programming note. Of course, President Joe Biden is going to be addressing the nation, his first address uh, at 7 o'clock tonight, and that is going to start pushing programming back. Yes, all of it will air in its entirety, and when all of those programs are done, the night beat will air just a little bit later tonight. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5. World News is next. We'll see you back here at 6.